Hi all, let's have a look at another mega clash of the neural networks. So Deus Ex, as in Deus Ex Machina, uh, is playing Leela 010161 with the white pieces. So we have the set book moves E4, C5, Knight, F3, Knight, C6. This is the end of the book. And Deus Ex on this occasion plays D4, the open Sicilian. We have actually C takes D4, Knight takes. We have a theoretically trodden path being followed by both engines and remember they haven't got opening books so this is from their self-learning so white castling queenside bishop d7 this is a this is a very trodden path b5 bishop takes g takes knight takes c6 now here there is an alternative which seems popular in king b1 in chess space live book for example this position is thought to be a small edge for white okay but uh, here we have actually knight takes c6 and now queen e1 bishop e7 bishop d3 b4 knight e2 queen b6 f5 on king b1 here again white's a small edge got a small edge here uh, so f5 is played immediately. We have e5, knight g3. Now uh, h5 is played in this position. Uh, so this could be a target pawn, of course. h4 is played. Usually in chess based live, but we still have human games from this position. King b1 has been seen before, and it's thought to be a small edge. But in this game, we have h4, uh, a5. Is played here, uh, which is an interesting decision actually. It seems as though black might be forcing matters with rook uh, g8 here. This could be uh, interesting. For example, taking this should be roughly even position. So a5, it's not really forcing matters by the way, it's just putting, I mean, a bit of pressure on the knight. Knight could remain there, I guess. So anyway. Queen d2, we have a4. Leela is installing a form pawn on a3, which can be extremely dangerous. Uh, King b1, we have queen c5, so a4, a3 is imminent. Bishop c4, and now a3 is played. Unfortunately, it's not the end of the game just because the form pawn is installed. THORN, uh, no, it's not the end of the game. In fact, f7 is under pressure. There's double pawns here, there's a liability here. It looks as though structurally. Uh, there's a lot going for white here to attack black with you know, f7 h5. It looks in a way miserable. Now, Leela plays casting queenside here, just letting f7 go. It's the first really of a set of dynamic decisions here. c3 is the dynamic decision from white instead of just taking the pawn. Let's have a look. But the thing is, this would unleash the wrath of queen c3 and the form pawn. Threatening mate, this position is tricky for white. So we have this position, it starts to get a little bit tricky. Uh, for example, here, black could end up actually being better. So that's an undesirable situation uh, to take on f7 here, is just letting queen c3 happen. So we have c3 instead, and white's trying to get that c5 and expose the black king at an intuitive level, anyway. We see b takes and now rook d3. Okay, now here is a very interesting moment in the game. Uh, the stockfish, very powerful stockfish engine locally, is seemingly suggesting uh, to play king b8, which leaves this kind of bishop a bit on the passive side and this structural kind of bind intact. Say so this position, it's a little bit on the grovelly side, I would say. After taking here, white has a small edge, uh, apparently, uh, from a technical angle. But it looks, yeah, it looks pretty pleasant for white. Uh, but actually, Leela kind of plays a liberating move here, d5. So liberating this bishop, which holds also the form pawn in many variations down. So it's, it's got a big advantage immediately just for protecting a3, if nothing else. Uh, we have here... E takes and the bishop just drops back. Rook takes c3 and the king gets out of the way of any nasties. 
Rook c2, black gets back one pawn. The rooks double. Bishop takes. White well, has to be careful here. Uh, rook takes his played. If queen takes, then black could do this. Takes and rook here hitting the knight. This position uh, is going to be uh, actually advantageous to black, it seems. Something like this. Black's going to have actually an edge here in this kind of endgame scenario. It's very nice with that pawn. That pawn is useful here. It sometimes can be a liability, but not here. I believe it's it's very useful. Uh, so the, the disastrous method is B takes because of check, and then the bishop really is a killer on the diagonal. There's no time to try and exploit the black king because this check, and then that's over basically. So we have a very wise, it seems, rook takes c4 decision, very logical. Queen goes to d6, rook goes back. Uh, you might think knight takes here grabbing a pawn that does allow this check and in this scenario it should be about even uh, not repetitions and say this other way then it ends up being as though it should be an even position. So uh, we see this rook coming to c3 instead of taking. Uh, rook d7, check. Now queen e2, rook g8, knight takes, rook d7, check, queen e2, rook d7. And yeah, there's some repetitions here and it looked as though they were just gonna repeat things as though there was nothing else to say, but then this, yeah, white giving up that h4 to trap, seemingly imprison the black queen, and says the queen, you can't even take it on g4 without a huge penalty. Black played rook d8. If queen takes g4, then white simply plays rook c8 check, winning, because on king a7 there's check, and if the queen has to move to avoid getting mated, you know, king a just probably gets mated pretty soon. Then there's a rook hanging on g8. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so queen takes g4 is is not on. And here, if if takes, then queen takes g4. So uh, poison pawn is avoided. Rook d8. Uh, we see rook g8. <laughs> it's good to mention these tactics. It does show they are tactically aware, unlike one of their previous encounters, where they didn't seem to be, either of them, very tactically aware. So queen a6, rook d8. Queen e2, rook g8. Queen f3, queen g5. And it looked here as though, again, there was going to be like just a repetition draw of some sort. But uh, something interesting starts to happen. Uh, soon, I assure you. Queen c2, as though rook c8 might be dangerous. Uh, now, rook c8 check is not tested, actually. White plays queen e2. Rook c8 seems fairly harmless because this position, uh, say queen f2 here, the checks don't really do too much damage. Black's eyeing b2 all the time. And if white tried to do anything else, like give black a, a free hand here with... Uh, Rook c2, then that's more than a free hand off the check, 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 and bang. Rook takes b3, winning for black. So the form pawn is behind the scenes, doing a lot of good work. Never underestimate the power of the form pawn in a critical game, guys. <laughs> okay, so queen e2, form pawn's working there, helping give some confidence that can hold on in this critical encounter. Uh, but things do get spiced up here, around here. Uh, we see king a1 all of a sudden. On rook c4, uh, taking this position, again, it should be like a draw by repetition. That pawn is very useful. Uh, so king a1, queen a6. Now, now we see knight g3. <laughs> Queen e3, yeah, and the game is like a new a new uh, type of position is emerging here now. What's going on here? 
queen d3 the queen is allowed to come back from Siberia but holding b5 critically here offering an exchange of queens uh, and now we have this rook b4 so not even taking the queen on c6 it should be even with taking on c6 this should be okay but tension is kept check here actually the queen is taken off in any case and now uh, again the pawns very useful <laughs> it has to be said uh, rook h4 I mean the position is good enough for rook h1 here actually either way either rook c1 or king c2 this should be even for example just to show <clears throat> this position should be okay uh, so it should be fine and um, this this way should be fine as well for black so actually the worst is over I, I believe here Knight d6 this is now a peaceful position coming to be a peaceful rock and pawn ending um, so getting behind the pawn the Tarash rule white is prepared to uh, allow e4 and here go for perpetual checks it's perpetual check land uh, so this is threatening checkmate so that's pairing that it's pushed back and then a threatening checkmate again so it's draw by repetition now might has to be careful about this pawn and other stuff at this stage uh, so a fierce battle which is unlike actually the character of many of the other drawn battles uh, between the traditional search intensive engines it just seemed a lot more fascinating intense and dramatic so credit to both of them here for this um, entertaining dramatic game in a key encounter uh, I think a key note is this liberating d5 if that affects our analysis of positions as people start to use neural networks then they see that these liberating moves which make the position easier for us humans to play that's going to have a profound effect on preparation against opponents analysis yeah I, I like the idea of playing d5 as a temporary pawn sack in this game it's liberating I love liberating pawn moves in general and Lila used that key d5 to seemingly make the position easier to play okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much